What is up party people? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Devin and I'm a self-proclaimed pen nerd and paper freak. If you could at all relate to that, you might want to consider subscribing because I do a lot of videos just like this one. For today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my fountain pen collection and I'm really excited. Despite it being a considerably modest size, I am excited about all the pens that I have right now and my excitement could also be due to the fact that I'm very new to the fountain pen world. I only recently started using fountain pens and there's just a lot of unexplored territory. If there's any advice or suggestions that you have, feel free to pop those in the comment section below. Let's go ahead and start from the very beginning and I'll do my best to share the fountain pens in the order of which I acquired them. I started my fountain pen journey over a year ago, but it was only recently that I really started to get into fountain pens and kind of geek out about them. So my first fountain pen is actually this one. It's a white fountain pen from Daiso and for $1.50 I thought why not? Let's give it a go. And I've always been interested in fountain pens. Even when I was younger, I thought they just looked cool. But whenever I asked my parents for one of them, I think they just, you know, brushed it off. Like, like, what do you need that for? So when I saw this at Daiso, it was a chance for me to see if I liked them or not, and if you're a longtime subscriber, you probably remember me sharing this in a video. And there was a little bit of frustration upon the initial trials, but you know, with fountain pens, there was a learning curve, and I didn't know that going in. I didn't set up that expectation. So this pen just kind of stayed in my regular pen collection for a long time before I came across fountain pen videos on YouTube, a lot from the Goulet Pen Company, and that education set me up for success when I decided to pick this up again. As far as I know, the Daiso fountain pens only come in two colors. They come in white and silver, and only one nib size, which is a medium. I like it though, because this is the broadest nib that I have, so not much variety in the nib size, just a heads up. But I think for $1.50 it turned out to be a great fountain pen. It's one that I use a lot now that I've kind of gotten the hang of it. This was inked up with Colorverse Andromeda which is a lovely shade of a deep rich magenta that has some sheening properties but I just used it up I think on Monday so I have to clean this out. I'm not sure if I'm going to refill it because there are other pens in my collection that I haven't gotten to yet and I'm trying to keep three at max inked up at one time just so that you know it's a good rotation and none of them get forgotten but I do want to mention that it does come with a blue ink cartridge when you get it from Daiso and I think they even sell the refills. It's just like a short blue cartridge. I haven't seen them sell black ones. The next fountain pen that I got my hands on was the Pilot Metropolitan and it's just the plain black barrel, very sleek, very matte, and very much what I'm into lately. I just like that timeless classic feel and this has an aluminum body much like the Daiso one? Well, I'm not sure if it's an aluminum body. Obviously, I'm not well versed in the materials that go into making a fountain pen, but I will say that the Pilot Metropolitan is definitely weightier than the Daiso fountain pen. This is a fine nibbed Pilot Metropolitan, and I currently have it inked up with Lamy Black. It does come with a bladder a squeeze bladder converter, I think that's what they're called, and a Namiki black cartridge. So I already used that up and I don't have the cartridge anymore because I broke it. I had intended on refilling it and just using that instead of the squeeze converter because I wanted to be able to see my ink levels but I messed up on that one so it just has the squeeze 
bladder converter thing. I'm sure there's a more technical term. It's like Aero something. This pen was about $15, $16, and I'll have everything linked off in the description box below so you guys have that as reference. But this is a wonderful pen. It is a fine nib, as I mentioned, but it writes extremely fine, especially now that I've tried other fine nibbed pens from other brands. This is just wonderful and even in my regular pen collection with my gel pens and ball points I've preferred a finer point pen so it came as no surprise that I really enjoyed this one. Here's where it gets a little bit fuzzy for me the fountain pens just started to show up in my mailbox but I think I got the Lamy Safari all black special edition for 2018 next and this is a pen that is made out of ABS plastic so it's got a different feel from the Pilot Metropolitan and the Daiso fountain pen that's got a triangular grip which we haven't seen with the previous two fountain pens it's got this huge clip so if you like to clip your pens to things that's nice it did come with a Lamy blue ink cartridge which I already used up and I got this in a fine nib so even though my Pilot Metropolitan is also a fine nibbed fountain pen this writes a little bit broader than the Metropolitan and if you're at all in the fountain pen world this may come as no surprise I cleaned it out so there's nothing in it right now but it'll get back in my rotation I'm sure the next fountain pen that I have is either the most expensive or the second most expensive pen that I have in my collection it's the Lamy Lux in rose gold and if you've seen my recent videos I've shared this before and I apologize that I kept referring to it as the all-star. That just proves how new I am to fountain pens, but this is a different line. Looks the same as the Lamy Safari. The material that's used to make the pen body is different. But I got this because of the rose gold finish. It is a stunning pen. I haven't used it yet. I still have the little cardboard protector to keep the cartridge from puncturing comes with the standard Lamy blue cartridge. I got this in an extra fine and it came in its very own pen case. So I keep it stored in there for right now and I protect it with the cardboard sleeve so that the case doesn't get messed up. My next pen is the Twisby Eco in pastel pink. The pastel pink was part of a limited edition launch and its counterpart was the pastel blue. Now I did purchase the pastel blue, but upon receiving it and inspecting it, it just wasn't the blue that I thought it was going to be. I thought it looked more striking in the photos I saw online and when I held it in my hand in real life, I just knew that I didn't like it. I didn't love it as much as the pastel pink, so I decided to return it. This is the extra fine pastel pink. It's got a piston filling mechanism. So the ones that I've shared with you are cartridge converters. Another difference is that it's a screw cap, but all the fountain pens that I have are a push to post and I haven't inked this one up yet. It's still brand new and I've just been storing it in its box and that's because I have another Twisby Eco going right now but I love the pink here and it's, I don't know, I just, I, I like the Twisby Eco so far so I am happy that I got the pastel pink one. Still trying to go in order, we're going to jump to the Lamy Safari Petrol and this was a special edition pen for 2016 and much like the pastel pink Twisby Eco situation, I purchased the dark lilac Lamy Safari when I purchased the Petrol and I don't have it anymore because I decided to return it. It just wasn't the deep shade of purple that I thought it was going to be. And it was like I had a little Marie Kondo sitting on my shoulder saying, if it doesn't spark joy, just 
let it go. So that's what I decided to do, but I did hold on to the petrol. This is the same as the Lamy Safari, just a different color. And I haven't inked it up yet. As you can see, I've got the little cardboard protector, comes with the Lamy blue cartridge, and I got it in a fine nib because that was the only nib size that they had. The great thing about the Lamy Safari and the Lamy Lux is that I do have the option to swap it out. It's pretty easy, but that is a pen that is very pleasing to my eye and I'm glad that I have it as part of my collection. Jumping back to the Twisby Eco, I did mention that I have another one and it's in white and it's currently inked up with the Robert Oster Sydney Lavender. It's a great ink, a very subdued, muted purple. I like it a lot. This is also extra fine and just only good things to say about the Twisby Eco. I definitely want to purchase other colors. Right now, there isn't anything that totally grabs me like the white and the pastel pink do, but it seems like Twisby is consistently coming out with new colors, so I'm excited to see what else they come up with and if any other colors call to me. So there's that one. And then last I have the Pilot Metropolitan Gold Zigzag and the Twisby Eco in white and this one are both gifts from Christmas for my parents. So mom and dad, if you're watching, thank you so much. I do love these pens a lot. So I haven't inked up this Metropolitan yet, but it's the exact same as the black one I shared earlier. So I know that I already love it. The only difference with this one is it's a medium nib. So I'm very interested to see how it compares to the Daiso fountain pen, if there's any difference at all. Again, it comes with a Namiki black cartridge, the case, and the squeeze bladder converter. So that is it for my fountain pen collection. Let me know if you saw any of your favorites here or if you have suggestions that you think I might like. It's always appreciated to hear from you in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want some more pen and paper goodness, I'll have some videos linked off in the description box below that I think you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe. I do my best to upload every Tuesday and Thursday evenings. So thank you so much for your patience and understanding as I get back into my routine. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time to watch, leave a comment, and support this channel. It really means a lot. Take care, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.